What's up Key Issues, Garrick here and welcome to today's video where we will be detailing what happened to the Hulk during Endgame. Of course, this video does contain major spoilers for Avengers Endgame, so if you haven't seen it yet, don't know why you're here, but just don't start complaining in the comments. The Incredible Hulk, hero, monster, world breaker, smasher of puny gods, these and more can be used to describe the big green gamma powered goliath we've seen crash onto the scene in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. For 10 years now, the Jade Giant has smashed his way through friends and foes alike, mercilessly pummeling gods, monsters, aliens, and even a few heroes who stumbled onto his path. And while some of these foes may have given the Hulk a challenge, none of them have truly defeated him at his strongest. None of them, that is, until Thanos. And this marked a major change in the Hulk's personality, and throughout that film, he refused to reemerge to be used for nothing more than as an instrument of war. So, in between Infinity War and Endgame, Bruce Banner realized that the Hulk could be much more than just a monster, and he merged the two beings into one perfect version of both. If you want more information on this merged Hulk, also known as Professor Hulk, check out our video on that subject by clicking the card. So after merging with the Hulk, Bruce continued to live his life as the premier expert in his field, and the world learned to accept this new Hulk as no longer something to be feared, but something to be respected. He seems to have separated himself from the Avengers, deciding to go the peaceful route, that is, until they needed that big brain yet again. Despite not being an expert on quantum physics, Bruce agreed to assist the Avengers with their plans to go back, get the Infinity Stones, and bring everyone they had lost back to life. While Bruce was able to figure out a way to alter the time stream, he couldn't figure out how to send someone through time. As Tony said, he was sending time through Scott, not the other way around. So with Tony's help, they were able to finally crack time travel and bring all of the stones back to the present and merge them into a custom gauntlet created by Iron Man with help from Bruce, of course, and as well as Rocket Raccoon. After finally creating the gauntlet, the next step was obvious, snap everyone back to life without altering the current timeline. While many Avengers offered to do the deed, they ultimately decided that Bruce should be the one to make the play. After all, the majority of the energy emitting from the stones was gamma radiation, something Bruce had a very, very intimate relationship with. So Bruce equips the gauntlet and immediately begins taking damage that brought the Jade Giant to his knees, and after finally mustering enough strength to perform the anti-snap, the gauntlet released a massive amount of energy that completely fried Bruce's arm. A lot of people have been asking us why this happened. I mean, there is a statement from the Russos that the Hulk was equal to Thanos, so why was Hulk taking so much damage when equipping the gauntlet and after snapping, essentially losing the use of his entire arm? Keeping the statement from the Russos in mind, let's look back at Infinity War. When Thanos finally inserted the Mind Stone, completing the gauntlet, we saw a burst of energy surge throughout his arm, but he took it like a champion. Meanwhile, just putting the gauntlet on had Hulk screaming in pain. And even after taking a blast from Thor, Thanos got right back up and used the full-powered gauntlet with no visible damage. It wasn't until he finally snapped that the energy seemed to harm him at all. Keep in mind that Thanos snapped after being pierced by Stormbreaker. So Thanos took that attack and absorbed the damage that the gauntlet did to him and was still able to open a portal with the Space Stone to escape. And while he was limping and his arm was clearly damaged by the snap, he took no visible damage from equipping the gauntlet, unlike the Hulk. So what gives? They're supposed to be equals. Why did the Hulk take so much damage from simply putting on the gauntlet? He even had the advantage of being able to absorb gamma radiation. Well, there are two reasons why. The first being that Thanos never equipped a full power gauntlet. Throughout the film, he worked his way through the cosmos, collecting one stone at a time, slowly becoming acclimated to the energy coursing through the Infinity Gauntlet. This is a huge advantage that the Hulk wasn't afforded. 
The second reason is Thanos simply had the better gear. His gauntlet was crafted by the dwarves of Nidlevir, who had specialized materials and regularly crafted legendary weapons which could channel massive amounts of magical energy. Almost all of the Infinity Stones were housed in containment units to try and keep the latent energy of the stones under control. The Mind Stone was housed in the Scepter and then a Vibranium body. The Space Stone was in the Tesseract for thousands of years. The Power Stone was in the Orb. The Time Stone was contained in the Eye of Agamotto, which was enchanted with an unbreakable spell. Bor had the Reality Stone hidden away for a millennia, and the Soul Stone was protected on Vormir. So of course, crafting a magical gauntlet to contain the power of all six stones was necessary. Meanwhile, the Hulk had a gauntlet made of Iron Man's armor, and while it's definitely a strong piece of armor, Thanos could rip it apart with his bare hands. It certainly was not anywhere near the level of Thanos' gauntlet, so the Hulk was at an extreme disadvantage when equipping the gauntlet for the first time. And that's pretty much it. The Hulk was just at a major disadvantage. The man didn't become any weaker. He just took continental energy straight into his body without being given time to slowly acclimate himself and without a legendary gauntlet crafted by the best armorsmiths in the galaxy. But the real question is, will the Hulk ever recover? Stay tuned to Key Issues for our thoughts in an upcoming video. So that's all we've got for you guys in today's video. If you did like the video, please remember to like and subscribe. It does really, really help us out and helps us grow. Also, feel free to share the video to any family, friends who may be interested. Uh, be sure to join our Discord. It's a ton of fun. We're in there every day chatting with fans. Uh, it's a great time. Also, be sure to follow us on all the social medias that you see on screen. If you want to support the channel, the best way to do that is to become a member. So consider doing that down below. Also, be sure to follow the Key Issues podcast on SoundCloud and iTunes. And remember the motto, it's endgame over everything, and I'll see you guys next time.